Again, welcome everyone to our 80th anniversary gala for Henry Ford College. Uh, my name is Reginald Best. I have the privilege and honor of serving uh, this fine institution as the Vice President of Institutional Advancement. Uh, I do want to welcome you and take this opportunity to thank all of your friends, family, alumni, faculty members for being with us here tonight. We have a, a packed house, a full house, so give yourselves a round of applause. Uh, we have many uh, um, uh, key and important people here this evening that we want to um, just show our appreciation to, but we are uh, excited for today's uh, uh, event. Um, we have several presentations, and I I'm most looking forward to you having the opportunity to hear from our president, uh, President Russell Cavaluna, later on uh, in the program. Uh, I'm excited for you. If you have not had the opportunity to hear um, him speak. I'm excited uh, for you to have the opportunity to, to be able to uh, hear from him on this evening. So we're looking forward to that later on. Uh, it gives me the great privilege to introduce someone who is really no stranger to any of us. Uh, he has uh, been around for many, many years, uh, 50 years to be exact, at Henry Ford College, and that is none other than John McDonald. Uh, when I say John McDonald, that should get a round of applause, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, John is uh, the master of ceremonies for this, this fine event uh, this evening. Uh, John hired into the HFC English Department in 1969. Um, yeah, that was the year I was born. I won't say that. <laughs> I told John, I was teasing him. I was sitting down getting instructions for him, and I and I, as I was getting up, I felt a little twitch in my back. I said, John, I turned the big 5-0 in a couple of weeks. And he says, he shook his head, oh, you're still young. So thank you, thank you. John has been the president and chief negotiator of the HFCC Federation of Teachers uh, and also the Ameri American Federation of Teachers, local 1650 since 1978. He has also served as the AFT Michigan's Vice President for Higher Education since 1978 and as a member of the AFT Higher Education Program and Policy Council since 1991. Uh, John was elected Vice President of the American Federation of Teachers at his 2012 convention in Detroit, Michigan. And let me add, uh, in that role, he serves over 7 million members who are part of uh, the American Federation of Teachers. In addition to serving on the AFT's National Governing Board, he's been appointed to the AFT Committee on Political Education, the AFT Democracy Committee, which promotes democratic principles and in institutions within the United States and abroad. He also as the AFT, serves as the AFT Human Rights and Community Relations Committee. Certainly, Mr. McDonald, or John, as we affectionately call him, is the past president of the Dearborn Rotary Club and the Dearborn Rotary Foundation and also serves on the board of Henry Ford Community College Foundation and the Dearborn Saturians. He is also active in many community organizations, which is important, um, a special note for me, being connected with the foundation. He has served for 25 years as the chair of the Michael Adre Golf Tournament, which raised over the years uh, millions of dollars uh, for HFC scholarships for students. So please join me in helping welcome up our master ceremonies, Mr. John McDonald. Well, good evening, folks. Thank you very much for coming to the 80th uh, gala, uh, celebrating our 80th year as a community college. Um, I've been around for a few of these galas, and you are by far the best crowd I've ever seen. <laughs> Oh, you're looking better. Yeah, okay. Um, the, uh, I want to tell Reginald that if he keeps emphasizing my 50 years here, <laughs> we're going to cut him off. <laughs> okay. Um, initially, I was asked to speak from the perspective of 50 years at the college. I am literally a bridge between 
the faculty and administrators and board members who founded the college, who were ending their career as I came to the college. <coughs> and um, later I was asked to be the master of ceremonies this evening. <coughs> and that's a risky thing to do. Uh, this, is a, this was an unattended microphone. I'm an English major, a higher ed prof, and a labor union leader, and they let me loose on a microphone. <laughs> Breakfast orders will be taken later on this evening. <laughs> but I want to, for, to begin with, acknowledge some important guests that we have this evening in attendance, uh, and among them, and uh, President Cavalluna will be introducing uh, about three or four of them, I think, later this evening. So I will just cite the people who are here. Feel free to stand, feel free to be applauded, or feel free to sit down <laughs> and remain in obscurity. Uh, Henry Ford III is with us. and. And all I have to do is mention the Ford name um, and go anywhere in Dearborn and mention the Ford name. Uh, the Ford family has been more than generous. I'm not sure I could find the adjectives. Uh, the campus exists because it was donated by the, Ford, the present campus by the Ford Motor Company. Ford Motor Trade School uh, combined with Fordson Junior High, which began the whole entity of Henry Ford Community College back in 1938. During the Great Depression, can you imagine a population, a voting population, committing itself to education in the depths of the Depression? That says something about Dearborn. It says a great deal about the Ford family. Um, and we are deeply appreciative. And we are, <laughs> please. And every, every time we have a millage election, that, that Derwin community is there to continue its support for this college. Uh, profound insight, profound value on education in this community. Congressman, Congresswoman Debbie Dingell, I may still be here. She had another event she had to attend. And I, yeah, please. <laughs> We, we lost John, a giant, a patron, um, and we're fortunate that the woman he loves so much has stepped into his position and is carrying on his good work in her quiet, unassuming way. <laughs> I'm told that Judge Hathaway is here. Is it Judge Hathaway or is he about? And I have not seen Jack. Has Jack O'Reilly arrived yet? Okay, all right. Um, we have the trustees here of Henry Ford College. Uh, Mary Petlikoff is chair. Uh, Hussein Barry. <laughs> Roxanne, <coughs> Roxanne McDonald. And I must say, Roxanne, Roxanne cherishes the fact that we're not related. She, we just had the, the good fortune of Mary McDonald male, you know. Michael Mead and Adele Mosip, is Adele here? Yeah, no. And Jim Thorpe, James. Thank you. You may be seated now, Chair Petlikoff. Well, you certainly stood as long as I asked you to. It's, I don't think it's my permission, it's the seating down that bothers you most. Foundation Board. The foundation is a group of cries of a group of citizens who have um, generously given of their time, their treasure, uh, and approached those that, those that might be a supporter of the college as well. And we have a number of them here tonight. Abe Mumpka. Abe is the chair. <laughs> Margaret Bloom. Is Margaret here yet? Okay, Margaret is past chair and a long-serving member. Uh, Jennifer Dickey. Woo! 
Anyone who gets more applause than I do, you know. It's, um, Bahanya, Bahanya, I'm sorry, Fawaz? Is here? No? Ah. Joan Hallisey. Or Hennessy. I have Hallisey on the mind tonight, and I'll tell you why later. Joan, did I? Okay, hi, Joan. Michael Kirk. Alan Osborne. Alan, general manager of the Henry Hotel on our foundation. Known, known Alan for a long time. He's one of the most generous people you can, you can ever meet. And you're, well, don't thank me for the truth, you know. When I embellish, thank me. Uh, let's see, uh, okay. Uh, Denise McDonald, I, 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 I think I remember her. St. Denise McDonald, as she's known among our mutual acquaintances. I'm here. Uh, uh, the Steve Quinlan, Stephen. Jean Martins, Jean. All right, have I missed any foundation members? Good. Oh, I'm sorry. Cindy Berry. I have that written down. Cindy was married to the Sir Michael Berry, great patron of the college. And my profound apologies. I wrote it in because I heard that you were be, you would be able to attend, and I my regrets that I'd mention it. Foundation Board Emeritus. Oh, I love that word emeritus. Gary Kuhlman, Park Place Catering. Superintendent of the Dearborn Schools, Glenn Maleko. Is, where is Glenn? Where's Glenn? Where's Glenn? They got the name wrong. It says Russell. Courtney Cavana, uh, Ka Courtney Cavaluna. Courtney Cavaluna. Tried to make you Irish there for a moment. Where's Samantha and Miles? I always, I know where my priorities are in dealing with any president of the college. Russell Cavaluna, please stand, president. Okay, I was told that doesn't count against my time. <laughs> so, um, after all of that, as master of ceremonies, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing myself. Uh, so I've been at the college 50 years. I actually was a student of the college two years prior to that 50. Uh, my cars automatically drive down Evergreen Road, no matter how I try to steer them. I have served all six presidents at this college. Uh, I was hired and mentored by World War II and Korean vets, which was the blessing of my life. Men and women who had courage and demanded that faculty be treated as a profession um, and taught me a lot of things. When I hired in, this college was not just technically a department of the Dearborn Public Schools, it was literally a department of the Dearborn Public Schools and the superintendent of schools ran the college. There are others here tonight, and I'll come back to that point, with, ex with history of the college that rivals my own. Uh, Mary Bouget, a former gra one of the, the f graduate of the first nursing graduation class. <laughs> Trustee for many, many years uh, on the Board of Education in the college. Um, and some people who are not here tonight uh, Bill Hackett is one of the faculty members of the generation that preceded me uh, and is, was so active in the community and still is. Andy Mazzara, unfortunately, couldn't make it, the third president of Henry Ford College. But Michael Mead is here. Michael, you can stand up again, <laughs> just between friends. Michael was vice president for student uh, issues here at the college for a number of years. 
and was interim president uh, for a period of time at the college. Uh, and uh, we were most, uh, you know, I and the faculty are most grateful that someone with profound college experience uh, joined the Board of Trustees, and he's been a valuable person there. I want to mention a few people, um, and I'm going to probably alienate folks, but there are certain patrons of the college over the years that come to mind. Michael Adre being one, and anyone from Dearborn. <laughs> Joseph Hallisey being another, Joe. <laughs> Gary Kuhlman is in that tradition. <laughs> Jim Doyle, George Bednar, they both of, um, Chair, well, allowed me to stand at a microphone while did, they did all the work on the Adre Golf Tournament for 25 years. Bob Zakar has been on the foundation a long, long time. And I want to mention Heinz Prechter and Etzel Ford, who were great patrons and um, really made some very, very strong efforts to help fund the college through their work in the foundation. Uh, I'm going to mention Vince Bruno because Vince, um, Andy Mazzaro saw the wisdom of bringing Vince on board after his career with the UAW, and I can regale you with Vince Bruno's stories later tonight. My local was founded in 1966. We were part of the Dearborn Federation of Teachers prior to that time. We went, uh, all, uh, we, we, we became a separate local at that time. But those teachers and our teachers ran great risks to their careers. The, uh, even in the 60s, but certainly in the 50s and 40s. Um, and it's hard to recall, um, but I was told of secret meetings in basements of homes as people talked about a union. I heard repeatedly of the status of women or lack of status of women during those years uh, and the need for professional standing. During that time, this local grew wiser, our local did. We became very active in the community. Uh, Mike Adre approached me, <coughs> well, Joe Hallisey introduced me to Mike Adre. And Mike Adre and Joe and I met, and Mike Adre said, well, you're going to put up $25,000 toward the uh, millage campaign. I thought, who the heck is he? You know, I, I haven't put up two cents toward a millage camp. Well, well, Andy was there, and we put up 25000 and it never stopped. Probably over the years, we've contributed about a quarter of a million dollars to Millage Campaign. <laughs> and we became involved in the community. Um, community activism is a hallmark of AFT nationally. And locally, I must compliment my wife. I did not know the Arab American community. It was smaller then, but I did not know them, and she did as former publisher of the, as publisher at that time of the Derwin Press and Guide. Denise, thank you. And as part of that, we got involved with charities. We probably contributed $150,000 or more over the last 20, 25 years. But I want to talk about two people who were presidents of this college that were phenomenal individuals. First is Stuart Bundy. Some of you may remember Stuart, but he established the culture at this college, a culture of collegiality and respect. He served 17 years at Henry Ford College as its president, and he, as a condition of his employment, insisted the college have separate authority, separate access, that he be a meaningful CEO to the Board of Trustees. Uh, he initiated a separate budget, because our budgets used to be commingled uh, with the K-12s. And uh, he initiated a lot of other things, uh, tr the employment training and tuition guarantees. He established the College Foundation. Uh, he, bricks and mortar, tech building, fine arts building, child care center, library, Ford UAW uh, building uh, that he negotiated a relationship on. He served as superintendent of schools and president simultaneously for over a year. That is what the trustees thought of him. 
He had a genuine respect for all faculty and other employees and referred to us as his jewels and his crown. Two 10-year accreditations from uh, the accrediting agency oversaw countless millage and capital improvement campaigns. And when he first said he was going to leave for California, a position in California where his family resided, that fell through. And when the faculty and staff heard that Stewart was not going to leave, they stood up and applauded. And Mike Adry at that time said, that's the finest compliment you can pay to a president, that he tells you he's going to stay. Now, I should tell you that Stuart and I have a lot of, there are a lot of Stuart stories, but my favorite is Stuart called me to his office one day. His daughter Grace and my daughter Mary were in childcare together. And Stuart said, before you hear it from anyone else, I want to tell you that Grace choked Mary today. <laughs> I said, can't we keep it at this generational level, you know? Uh, but despite all of that, Stewart deserves a billion in his name at Henry Ford College. The second president I want to mention is Andy Mazzara. 17 or 18 year tenure, two 10 year accreditations, library renovation, expansion, student services building, tech building, uh, addition, UAW Ford buildings converted to college use at that time. Um, passed numerous, again, uh, uh, capital improvement and millage campaigns. He referred to his employees as the best and brightest. He was a negotiator, though, of Sicilian heritage. <laughs> so every time we thought we had a deal done, and I'd tell the new negotiators, it's going to be, Andy's going to ask me to step outside because he always wanted to tweak the final settlement. And eventually I'd go out there singing, tweak me once, tweak me twice, don't tweak me again. He teared up with pride in his farewell speech, he had every right to do so, because he continued Stewart's, Stewart's culture. Okay, over the years, what have I seen? I've seen that, and the people I've seen affected me most. Uh, bricks and mortar. You can look at the campus today. Originally, there were five buildings. In I was not here in 1962, believe it or not. Uh, but there were five buildings. Library was in the liberal arts building. President's office is where my office is now. <laughs> that was good. Um, by the way, why is, my pre why is my office in the campus safety building? That could <laughs> That can be read two ways. I offer safety or I'm being incarcerated, one or the other. But the most important change, I think, has been in the demographic we serve, the students we serve, the community we serve. When I came here as a student, and in my, probably in my first 20 years as a faculty member, college students were predominantly white, middle, upper middle class, some working class. Faculty was predominantly white male. Faculty is now one half female, probably about 20%, approaching 20% Arab American descent, probably 20% of African American descent. The, and, we, and, and President Kevin will acknowledge we really need to reach out in a better way than we have, and I'm sure he will, to the Latino Hispanic community that's right on our border. But our students are also first generation college students. There's an immigrant population of, of considerable size. We are addressing the needs of students from dis uh, disadvantaged socioeconomic backgrounds. So the challenges are great, the opportunity is great, and the diversity is a blessing. So, um, before I look to the future a little bit, President Cavaluna, uh, I do want to acknowledge two people, at least two, I might be missing others. Adele Mosip, Board of Trustees. And 
And an even important Mozip, I, I assume, in the name, first name? I'm sorry? What? Okay, very good. And uh, Sharon Dalmage, who put a long term in serving on the Board of Trustees. Very good. Okay. So, the end is near. I was told that the ice carving melted before I started speaking tonight, which was reassuring. Uh, yeah. Uh, you, can you, can, you can think of that in terms of duration or hot air, one or the other. So President Cavaluna, he's bringing to the college energy, respect for employees, collegiality. He's bringing community outreach back to the college, which is very important. Um, he is, whether he knows it or not, cultivating the heritage, the legacy of Stuart Bundy and Andy Mazzara and Michael Mead. In a short time, he's restored morale at the college, revealed an enlightened, modern, administrative role model. He wants to be and he's become a role model for all employees at the college. He came up through the, with, uh, from a classroom teaching background and it shows. He is the most sympathetic figure. He's the sixth college president who's had to deal with me. <laughs> he held two jobs where you cannot make a mistake. He was a pilot and a federal prosecutor. President Cavaluna, welcome to your third position where you can make no mistakes. <laughs> so, well, the last thing I want to do is recognize Reginald Best and his staff for their great work. Stacy Bosman has been dealing with me, getting ready for tonight for a long time. Henry Ford, the Henry Ford staff, who is beginning to bring food out. And I want to introduce for our invocation the Reverend Wilson J. Boyd of the New Testament. Church of Christ in Detroit. He is married to Shea Boyd of our development office. So he is an obedient servant of the Lord and an obedient servant of Shea Boyd. Good evening, everyone. You're looking very nice. Hope you're having a pleasant time. Can we bow our heads for prayer, for a word of prayer, please? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you provide. Thank you for meeting our physical needs of shelter and hunger. Thank you for our loved ones and financial resources. Thank you for our life health and strength, and we thank you for this occasion. Lord, we ask a special blessing upon Henry Ford College. Every student, the faculty, staff, and leadership. Lord, bless those who have prepared this beautiful meal for us that it may be nourishment for our bodies. We thank you for the food we are about to receive. As they prepare and serve our food, Lord, let us never forget how much we owe you and let us always to remember to give thanks. Scripture says in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 
and all these blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Everyone say amen. amen. God bless you. Again, we thank uh, our foundation board member, Alan Osborne, who's also the general manager of, of uh, the Henry uh, for such great service. So we certainly appreciate that. Um, it gives me, yeah, absolutely. It gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, the sixth president of our college, uh, President Russell Cavaluna. Uh, I know John had mentioned uh, several things about his accomplishments, uh, but I would also say on behalf of the cabinet uh, and, and myself that we are just very proud uh, to be a part of his leadership, to be a colleague with him, uh, and we're excited about the direction that we are going. And so it gives me an honor to be able to introduce to you President Russell Cavaluna. Good evening, how is everyone? Good, I like that warm welcome. And I, I'll have to tell you, I've given many public comments, and I'll tell you that the least good opportunity to give public comments is after people have a full tummy and alcohol, maybe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> on a Friday night, and so I, I'm sensitive to the fact that um, uh, brevity is, is glory here. Um, uh, your program notes a couple of our uh, leaders of our community uh, who are here supporting us as a college, and I want to identify them. Um, one is our, our really just tireless congresswoman, Debbie Dingell, and uh, <clears throat> um, I'm uh, the reason why I say tireless is I, I'll tell you, this job, I, when I took this job, everyone said you'd be running a lot, but I'll tell you, I literally have ran through two dr pairs of dress shoes already in so many events, and Debbie Dingle's at more events than I am. Uh, and I think she said four events tonight, but she stopped by and she did give this uh, congressional record proclamation, which uh, I, I really want to point to um, my colleagues here at the college. There are many of them here, and I want to say to you that uh, Representative Dingle has been a supporter of our college. Uh, this is representative of her support of us, and of course, um, that House seat has been supportive of us as a college for uh, 60 years or more. So thank you for uh, the, uh, Congresswoman Dingle. Uh, of course, our, our esteemed mayor, uh, Jack O'Reilly, is also, I think he's, he probably burns through a pair of shoes every week, um, and uh, he, he was hoping to join us today, but he cannot, and I, I just want to say that uh, please don't uh, understand anything other than he has great support for our college, and in fact, you'll remember um, in October, I believe it was, when the investiture happened for uh, my position, he did give great remarks about our college and his support of it. Now, there's one other leader that I want to talk about that's important that I'd like to um, give you an idea of what it, what it feels like to be supported by um, someone who's a leader in our community, but also someone who's been a good friend to me. Um, <clears throat> and I, I hold your applause, but this person is Henry Ford III, and I, I want to tell you a little bit about him and then tell you a, an interesting story. And then I'll ask uh, Mr. Ford to come up. Um, Mr. Ford... Um, I imagine had an interesting upbringing with a name like that. Um, and I imagine that um, he would have an occasion uh, to possibly get a bigger head than um, you might expect. But I found that to not be the case. And despite that, you, you, you have to look at this person's background. This person was a public educator. He's uh, donated his time and effort with his wife to a, a nonprofit foundation in the city of Detroit. Uh, communicating to our entire region that uh, it is valuable to invest in taking care of children in birth through three as the, one of the most highest returns that people can give in investment in human capital. He um, works for a little company called the Ford Motor Company. Um, and I've, I've met many of the individuals for that, from that company and they have a, a common refrain to talk about uh, when you talk about Henry Ford. It's that he is honest, he is caring, and that he is very, very giving of his time, which means a lot if you have a young family like he does. I, I, I know how much time um, has a value to him. And he, frankly, since I started this job 10 months ago, every single time I've asked him for help, every single time I've said, and it's been candid, I said, Henry, I, I really would appreciate it if you attend this event with me because I'll be candid, your presence 
does a lot for Henry Ford College. And every single time he's been there for me. It started when I first started this job and we were going to Lansing and I was asking the legislature to consider giving this college a significant grant of funds to grow our technical building. And you'll probably, I, I try to brag about this event for our college every time I can, but you may have heard in December that the legislature did just that. They endorsed our college to the tune of $6.7 million, and it simply would not have happened had many people helped us, had not helped us, but certainly Henry Ford's uh, time and effort on behalf of the college. And folks, this was pure pro bono work on behalf of our college. And so I have this interesting picture that I want to tell you a funny story about. You may know some of the people in that picture. Um, we were really excited this year when the new governor decided to come visit us, and of course, there are, there are very few events that I, um, I don't invite Henry to. And of course, like I said, Henry is always the sport and, and showed up at what we have is the, um, <clears throat> the Ford Asset Program, where we train students in 18 months while having a paid internship at a dealership to gain the certificates necessary to become dealer, uh, dealership employees and all the certificates that Ford requires to have them. <clears throat> So imagine this, the governor of the state is coming and we're going to show off this, this area. We've got our students who are coming back from their internships in their uniforms, showing the governor what kind of investment the state is making and what kind of return it is to our community. These are individuals who will do 18 months of work on and off in our college and back at the dealership and will be making forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year. <clears throat> And we're really proud of that. And so I showcased that. And we're really proud of our relationship with Henry Ford III. So I wanted to showcase that. And we're really proud that the new governor was willing to come and look at it. And we walked her around and showed her these students and the, and the vehicles. And then I said, let's take a picture. And that's, this is the picture you get to see. And then the governor's on a tight staff uh, window and time. So she moves out very, very quickly. And it's just the, these students and Henry Ford and a couple of members of my team. And I looked at those kids right, right as Henry was kind of moving to the periphery. I said, now tell me, was it more cool to be around the governor or more cool to be around Henry Ford? <laughs> <laughs> and you would not be surprised. They all said, it was a lot cooler to be around Henry Ford. <laughs> <clears throat> And it's because these kids are going to grow up and be employed by a corporation and an ethos of hard work and deliberation to have meaningful work, meaningful employment, a living wage, and we're delivering that. And it wouldn't happen unless people like Henry Ford III and his family supported our college. So it's an honor to have him here. Henry, I could go on for a while, but I'd like you to have an opportunity to address this crowd because you deserve it. You've supported us, and I'd appreciate it if you could come up. Henry Ford III. Uh, thank you, Russ. I, I appreciate that. Uh, I will also be very brief tonight. Um, a couple things I want to point out. First of all, I'm not sure if you noticed this, but I'm currently wearing the same suit and tie and shirt <laughs> that I was wearing in that picture. I have a limited wardrobe at home, which I get... Um, complaints about from my wife often. The other thing I wanted to point out is that when I, when I drove up tonight, I drove up from the south end and I saw what I now understand is to be a prom and I thought, oh my gosh, I might be under, a little bit undressed for the, the evening tonight. <laughs> How great it is that all these students are coming to the gala. It's wonderful. Um, I am, uh, you know, I, I've been, uh, I guess, semi-officially in, involved with the college for a couple years now and, you know, I, uh, it, I, I really believe in what the college is doing. Uh, I believe in its mission. I believe in the team that is leading it. I believe in Russ and, and his team. Uh, and I have been so impressed by everything I've seen uh, at the college since I, really since I set foot on campus. Um, and I was, uh, a couple weeks ago I was, actually speaking at the, um, at the inauguration for uh, Chancellor Grasso for uh, U of M Dearborn. And in my remarks, I was talking about, um, you know, what a great partner that U of M Dearborn has been uh, to the Ford Motor Company. 
And I was thinking the whole time, gosh, I, I really want to mention Henry Ford College, but I'm not sure if I should do that. It's U of M, I'm at a U of M Dearborn event. Not that they're, you know, rivals, but, uh, you know, is that appropriate or not? And so now I can, now I can actually talk to Henry Ford College audience and, and tell you that, that you really are um, great partners to the Ford Motor Company. We have, um, I think, together um, a lot of, you know, uh, systemic challenges that we need to tackle together um, going forward. And I think that through the types of partnerships that Russ and, and his team um, are really building with, um, with companies all over the state of Michigan, um, I think we can come together and find the solutions that will create better futures for um, all the members of our communities in this area. So I, I am uh, very appreciative of everyone at Henry Ford College. I think this this college is a true asset for the Dearborn community, for the Southeastern Mission community, for the state, um, for the Ford Motor Company. We are um, so grateful for your partnership and for everything that you all do. And uh, I am I'm, um, so grateful to be here tonight. And um, thank you very much. Thank you, Henry. I appreciate your partnership and your friendship, frankly. Um, well, good evening. I, I'm, I'm excited to talk to you tonight about the history of Henry Ford College, the uh, present of Henry Ford College in the future. And I, my hope is that I get this done in less than 15 minutes. Now, I've got, <laughs> yeah, that's a great applause line. <clears throat> um, now, I've got two people in the back of the room that were prosecutors with me um, who, who know that there's a certain um, problem accepting what I just said. Um, <laughs> but, um, what, what, I, what I first want to do is tell you that I believe in teamwork. I really, truly do believe that the best and most effective way when we do things great, when we actually achieve excellence, is when we've accepted that we can't do something on our own and we find teams to do it. You can see this in other kinds of institutions and industries, and it's essentially when the humans in the group say, I wanted to be and I, I was something, part of something bigger than myself when we get past the natural inclination to look at ourselves and think the team is bigger and better. And part of being a good teammate is acknowledging your teammates. So I want to do that now, and, and I'm going to list several people's names, and you're all worthy of applause, so please hold the applause until I can announce my teammates. We have a cabinet at Henry Ford College, and, and they, they are the ones that keep me out of the weeds sometimes, despite my best attempts. Um, and they are, they are really the ones that execute the mission at the college. And they are my friends, they are my colleagues, and I want them to stand um, to be recognized here. Now, we have Vice President of Academic Affairs, Michael Nealon. He is a, a, a doctor. Please stand, Dr. Nealon. We have, <clears throat> hold those applause because we're going to do a lot of these. And I want to get one. Uh, we have uh, John Satkowski, who is the chief financial officer and, and served our college with admirable distinction as the interim president between my predecessor's time and my own. We have Amy Clark, who is here, and she is legal counsel. And we have um, Reginald Best, who you've heard from already today. Uh, he is the vice president of institutional advancement, and when I started, I said I want you to take government relations, and he took it on right away. We have Dr. Daniel Herbst, who is the Vice President of Student Affairs. And um, we have Dr. David Cunningham, who is the President of the AFL-CIO Local 71. And, we, and by the way, that's a, that's a union leader, and so is John McDonald, and I still call them my teammates. I, that's important. We have the uh, president of the um, uh, adjunct faculty, which is described as the AFO, Dr. Lynn Boza. I saw her. She may have, Dr. Boza, you're still here, Dr. Boza. And um, frankly, there are so many good-hearted, willing donators to our cause here that are employees that I'm going to ask anyone who calls themselves a Henry Ford Hawk or a Henry Ford employee to stand up, and we can applaud everyone who works with me at Henry Ford College. <laughs> Now, uh, I said I want to talk a little bit about the past of Henry Ford College, and I'll tell you that I've been here 10 months. So um, 
I know a very little amount about the 79 years preceding my time here, which is about 49 years less than John McDonald, <laughs> which, which, um, which is okay, I guess. Um, but the truth is, um, I recognize that our history of 80 years, our history is something that is strong. It is something that we can look back at and be proud of. That's why John McDonald was the MC. Of course, we've introduced him twice now, once on his own and once with Reginald. But clearly, I'm sending a message to you if you're employed here. Our partnership with our history and our knowledge of our history is important to me. It's important to the employees of the institution. And for those of you who are interested in supporting us financially, which you are here tonight, I want you to sense that the leaders of this institution are proud of each other and proud of our history. And I'm willing to say that even at the risk of bringing them up and having have another dispute with the board chair in front of everybody. <laughs> but what you can see, I hope, is that we care about each other. And we want to work together because we believe this mission of this institution that started in 1938 in a schoolhouse in Dearborn, and 80 years later, we're on a campus of 75 acres with several, several buildings, 13,000 students. And can we put that picture back up? Um, because it, it shows where we are now. And it shows what our history has taught us. And that is our focus, our focus has always been on students and success. This picture embodies that. And our focus going forward is the relationship between our students, our institution, government, and industry. That's really where the best of higher education exists today. And that's where our history is. Think of the name. We are Henry Ford College. We are where the connection of these types of important parts of our society come together and do great things. This is a speech that my really, really able teammate, Rhonda DeLong, gave me, and I'm going way off of it, Rhonda. Um, um, so, Rhonda, bear with me. Um, but what this institution has is always been access, always been access to people who wanted an opportunity for what I describe as the American dream, which is an opportunity to invest in oneself through education, as a means to provide individual success and a belief that if individuals invest in themselves and have individual success, that we have societal success writ large. That's why this picture is so powerful, because that's what you're seeing right there. And that is what the history of Henry Ford College has been. 80 years of investing in students. Look at the motto of this college, for the good of all. Think of what this college has been through for the last 80 years. And we continue to be for the good of all. There have been wide, wide social changes in our society and in our world. We've seen the space age, 14 United States presidents, major economic success and major economic falls. Almost every one of the gadgets that you have in your pocket came to be through the years of this college's existence. And it says so much to me that 80 years later, we're still here. We're still here celebrating what we have as a history. And Mr. McDonald, jokes aside, your service to this institution deserves respect and dignity and praise. And I always say that publicly because it is worthy of being said. You. Now, don't be confused. Mr. McDonald and I meet every week, and we have candid conversations, and we disagree, as an educator and an administrator should. But I will never shirk from what I tell you today. And if you're a member of this community, you can always rely on Mr. McDonald and I to be civil and respectful of each other and the roles that we play. <laughs> So 
what's, what's happening in, in higher education today that we need to talk about? Access to higher education is becoming more difficult and more difficult. It is, I believe, and in my family's experience, it is the path to success, and it is getting more and more difficult for people like my dad, an immigrant from Brazil, had. There are all kinds of burdens that we put up in front of these students. And many of our students get through them, but some don't. And what you have done tonight, by giving your treasure to this institution, is you have started to eliminate some of those barriers. And you have my and all of my colleagues' deepest and warmest heartfelt thanks. It warms our heart to have you support us. Thank you. <laughs> Let me tell you about some of the students that you might be supporting. Byron Brooks is a graduate of our institution, and he's a great example. In fact, Byron and I are friends now. He, we exchange text messages. He's a graduate. This is a young man whose mother was in prison when he was born. Some of you have met. My wife and I have met Byron at a couple events. Um, he was raised by his great-grandparents. It's not a surprise that he had trouble. Didn't get through high school very effectively, but did, and then enrolled in Henry Ford College. And in the first term and first year of his time at Henry Ford College, the young man was homeless and still attended college at Henry Ford College. And then members in John McDonald's local, the faculty of this institution, and very well may have been Dr. Bose's members in the uh, adjunct faculty, realized this young man had potential and helped him. Helped him get funds for housing, helped him get funds for nutrition, through the emergency fund that Reginald Best's emergency fund fills with your donations from tonight. And of course, I wouldn't be bringing this up unless you know Byron Brooks became the student council president, a graduate, now at Ferris State, has his own nonprofit helping homeless kids in Detroit, from which my wife and I donate, and texts me this morning. Hey, Russ, I just want to let you know um, I'm going on an international study abroad trip. I can't wait to bring back what I learned to help kids in Detroit and underserved populations. Your donations are helping children like that. And that's not it. Some of you um, should know that we cost $100 a credit. It's 99. We cost $99 a credit for students in Dearborn. That's about a $6,000 associate's degree. And if you get um, financial aid or Pell Grants, which most of our students do, then it's something way less than that for an associate's degree. And despite that low level of what college costs our students, we still take what you have given to us today, and just last year, we helped students with your support to the tune of $320,000. Put that into how much that helps those kids. We do that through things like the Devin Smiley Legacy Scholarship. Devin Smiley was born in 1998, and he was active in service, and he was a volunteer and counselor at camps, and he had a great sense of humor, and he wanted to go to college, but he didn't make it because he tragically died in an auto accident when he was 17. But his family established the Devin Smiley Legacy Scholarship to help other people attend Henry Ford College. Vivian Foster was a nursing instructor at our college. She served as a nursing instructor for over 20 years, and she wanted to help individuals get through college and make a difference in their lives and in their communities. She, uh, when she passed away, she and her family set up a scholarship to help nursing students. And you can see the efforts there with the significant donation leading to the Vivian Morton Foster Great Room at our School of Nursing. And last year, Gary Coleman, who you've already met tonight, Carl Fava, Brad Simmons, and Walt Talamonte got together to establish the Boy Scouts of American Mohican District Scholarship. Now this scholarship is awarded to Eagle Scouts from the Mohican District to go to Henry Ford College. That means something. When a donor gives money directly to Henry Ford College, we take that so seriously. And I'm proud to say that uh, a graduate of Fort's in high school, Ma, um, Mahmoud Abbas Risks, is enrolled this past fall in an engineering program because of the donations of people like the men I mentioned, including my, my close friend Gary Coleman. 
These are just a few of the stories. And these are the people you're supporting. And these are why I am so grateful for your attendance tonight. Now, I want to talk a little bit about what we see in the future. I've been at this campus for 10 months, and I get, I get questioned often about what the view from my seat is of the future of Henry Ford College. What maybe the next 80 years holds. And I want to tell you that there are two main goals we will continue to strive for and try to improve upon. Being an institution of access, meaning we are truly a path where people can gain education as a means to make themselves and society better, and success. Access is no longer enough. Success has to be part of a college experience. Now, we define success in all different manners, but I'll tell you, if you take a young person or a middle-aged person who has no college and send them to Henry Ford College, even if they only get through one term, that person is changed and is a better member of society, and even that is a success. And your donations to us tonight help that to be a success. But what would be the grand vision if this institution made good on its history and made good on its true blessing? It would be that we replicated that so well. You know, this is the merger of education, industry, and government. That a student can engage an institution like Henry Ford College and know if I do well, I have a job guaranteed for me and it will make me a prosperous member of society. If we can replicate that at Henry Ford College over and over, we can and will be the model for this state, for this region, and with the team that we have here that you just saw, we can be the model nationally for people to come to us and ask, how did you make a deal with Henry Ford College and Ford Motor Company and the state government such that you helped bridge the skills gap? You took people who were, had barriers artificially put before them and got them into college and got them into jobs. I really truly do believe that we can do that and I truly do believe that will be our passion for the next 80 years. And I do hope that we become the national standard for that. We're already doing it. Do you know 3,000 students are attending our institution who are in high school right now? We are literally narrowing the gap between high school and college. And we're going to continue to narrow the gap between college and job. You've got the best school, school superintendent in the state. He's here. <clears throat> That's not me just saying it. The Michigan Association of School Boards not, uh, told us that he was the best school board uh, superintendent. And I'm so proud of it because my two little babies are in the school. But the truth is, we can do great things with that kind of leadership at the Dearborn Public Schools, and we're already doing that. So I think what I would leave you with tonight is that if you are an employee at Henry Ford College, I am your teammate in this extraordinarily important work. I truly do believe that we can do great things. I would not have moved my family across the state and changed jobs unless I believe this institution had what it took to do that. If you are a friend of the college, if you are a leader of the college and the board of trustees, if you represent Ford Motor Company and you're looking for partners who can change the future through education, thank you for coming tonight. You being here says you trust us to move this forward. I challenge you to find any other educational institution that is more committed to this. And if you find them, come and tell me, because I'll copy what they're doing. <laughs> Jokes aside, this is serious business. We are committed to this. And you giving your donation to this college is serious business to me. We will make good on what you've given to us. And we will move this college forward for those goals of access and success. I'm supposed to make a toast now. And I didn't even come close to 10 minutes, Sally. I appreciate your patience. I'm passionate about this, but I do want to say to you that in the custom of raising a glass and cheersing, if that's a verb, um, <clears throat> what we're doing is saying to each other, good luck to each other. We're, to get, we're in this together. We're proud to be together in this mission. If you believe in Henry Ford College's mission, if you believe in the future that I hope we have,
please raise a glass and put it with someone else and let me say thank you. I hope you have a great night. Thank goodness I'm done. And now let's have music and let's have a good time. Good night, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, Henry Ford College's school song, Pro Bono Omnium, For the Good of All.
So poor was such a romantic. He really was frantic. He pursued me. Get ready for a little romance. Let me tell you now, without a doubt, the rest of Romeo pursued me. I'm telling you, he showed me such emotion that I finally took the notion to give it. You took the notion. Did you imagine his emotion ever was the kind to go for cooling? Did you think he might be jiving or something fooling? Or did you appraise it as real? Did you go for what came? Oh, was love in the game? If the love is answer, then you won't forever be quite the same. I'm sure you know that that's so. Well, I dropped my heart now in Bennett. Said a few sincere words, never dreamed that I meant it. To tell you all the truth I ever, ever really meant to begin it. How can you explain true love? How can I disdain true love? Love is real exciting. So exciting. And when it turned me around, I didn't feel like fighting. Wouldn't have taught me. Except when I saw you, I was sure than sure. This really couldn't be. What do you know? It really was so. I'm not saying right. 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 This game, all misunderstand. But play it, one thing sure, love's what I'm in. Unloose, you 
the soul and let it begin. That's it. Let that madness start. It's got me stumbling, it's got me mumbling I'm like a ship without a rudder A car without wheels Unless you feel it, I can't reveal it You gotta have it happen to you To know how it feels One thing sure, love has got me I'm as certain as certain can be I'm yours till eternity Short on the set, I remember it yet. I was not down. I took one look at you, and what else could I do? Love walked in, and I knew there was no doubt. No, no doubt. I love you, yes, I sure do. Sip your tea, the memory of all that. No, no, they can't take that away from me. The way you smile just be, just like the leaves of the moon. The way you sing of me, you sing out a tune. The way you haunt my dreams. No, no, they can't take that away from me. We may never, never. Bumpy road to the 
you very much. That's the Henry Ford Big Band under the direction of Rick Goward and our own Midnight Blue. Both college groups happy to perform for you. Choo choo. Once again, it's your own Henry Ford College Big Band and Midnight Blue. Thank you very much, Russ. Ah, uh, shucks. We're going to dedicate this, uh, this one right to Mr. Russ Cavalu Cavaluna, right, the Brazilian way. Fly me to the moon. To Russ and his lovely wife, Courtney. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. In other words, die and kiss me. Sing forevermore. You 
Ladies and gentlemen, Midnight Blue and the Big Band, President Russell and his lovely wife, Yay! Courtney Cavaluna. The dance floor is open for your dancing, listening, enjoyment for the rest of the evening. Thank you. Kick it off, maestro. Thank you. 
these are the party animals, we were told. Diana's over here is upset. We don't have a mic on an ensemble member up here. But somebody wanted some old Chicago tune. He was 25 or 64.